Are you ready? Nope. Oh. Look at that. Look at that. And tilting it up. I'm quite jigging when that's happening. So you can see here at one point in this boat's life, it had a hummingbird sounder at the back of the boat here. I really don't know why you would have a position there unless you're just a bait fisher, you're on anchor, current's passing through, you spin your seat around, fish out the back, looking at your sounder as the fish cruise past. So not a good spot. So whenever you're putting a sounder in the boat, you've really got to think it through and think where you're going to actually be sitting and fishing in the boat. So obviously this is the chair that we'll be sitting in or a replacement chair when we're using the tiller steer. So what we seem to think is if we put this here, this is the ram bracket, put that bracket there for the sounder. You can see it there, it's not too close to your knees. You can see it very clearly from that seat. But what you can also do is when you're standing up or at the front of the boat, you can move the sounder around. So no matter where you are in the boat, so if you're just drifting along and you've got two guys standing there, you can tilt it up so you can actually see it. It's not facing the back of the boat. You can face it in any direction you want. So have a good think about where you want to position your sounder before you start just chucking it in anywhere. Because I'll tell you what, if you don't put it in the right spot, it's really going to tick you off once you start fishing. And this is really simple. It's just a few holes here. We're going to go straight through the aluminium. We are going to stick or flex the whole thing and we'll go through that with you right now. So one rule of thumb, whenever you drill a hole in an aluminium boat, use sicker flex. Whenever you're putting anything into the boat, use sicker flex. Just make sure you're keeping your boat watertight. Now, as much as that's nice and high, and even if you didn't use sicker flex, the chances of water coming through are pretty remote, but you know, why take any chances, that's eh? Right. Sicker flex it. There you go, mate. If you don't like the white, you can, I'm pretty sure you can get a black sicker flex as well. I think there's even a clear one. But um, I love the stuff. The more the better, I say. That was very delicately done there, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Soft hands. Yes. So these bolts are nice and long, which is fine, but we're just going to trim them off with a hacksaw once they're in there. Now using a hacksaw blade is probably a neater way of doing it, but this is a much quicker. <laughs> and no one's unscrewing it ever, so bolt cutter will be fine. We're gonna so. Stretch it out a little bit, make sure it fits on there. And then just, just tighten up. Don't go too tight because you can, uh, well actually, you can do these tight because, and you'll have the bracket straight up and down because it's not gonna turn on the bracket, it's gonna turn on the ball. The other great thing about having a bracket like this is that when you park your car somewhere again, you can just undo the bracket there, take your sounder out, and it just leaves the bracket, and you can take your sounder inside so no one flogs it. Enough to get it in. Tighten it back up. Oh, look at that, Jace. I think it's pretty good where it is, but just like that looks good, doesn't it? Look at that, come around this side. Mr. Camera Operator. You can see in relation to where the seat is, where you're sitting, it's perfectly positioned and it's slightly lower. We can actually bring it lower if we wanted to. So it's sort of underneath the gunnel to stop that splash from, from getting on the sounder. Next part is to power it up with a bit of battery power and run the cables. Transducer. Drill the right pilot hole, not too big. Screws will have something to bite into all the time. Yeah. Really make sure it's sealed, eh? Good 
So that first one? Down here? Yeah. yeah. Right I reckon there, and then... I'll just plug that up. Yeah. I think I'm going to bring all the excess down here, eh? Yeah, keep going. That's it. No That's more. Right. Yep. So jam. <coughs> I'll take out the 16,000 screws they've got in here. Yeah. On ski. Bounce off Joe's car. <laughs> yeah, twang. Oops. I guess the next thing we do is just connect the battery up. Do we? Really cool little trick that Jason just showed me. These little electric terminals won't fit around the, uh, the screw on the battery. So all he's done is just got a couple of little clippers there and just clip the end of them off. So they'll bend out just a little bit more and will fit perfectly around that screw. That's a very clever idea. Rather than pulling these off, putting bigger ones on. And obviously it's not gonna make any difference. Not at all. Very clever, Jason. Not just a pretty face, mate. <laughs> not even that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Do you, ever, do you ever put a uh, washer between them? No. You don't worry about it? No. Well, I'm crushed up to and fro, so I'll bring this down a bit. It's just to hold it. Pull a little bit out. It's got a notch in it. Look at that, bro. We semi look like we know what we're talking about, Jace. Well, you do at least. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. So we've pretty much um, botched the silicon job on our million dollar boat, but that's okay. A couple of little spots like that along the way will hold this in place and it'll be fine. Well, it's amazing what you can get done in one day. I mean, Coda's on, the Hummingbird's in, uh, we've run our wiring, we've got our battery in. Still a few more things to go though. Fix up the trailer, but still a few more things to go. So I reckon a couple of hours tomorrow morning and the mini Titanic <laughs> will be ready to go. Well, after a couple of more hours this morning, it looks like we have finished the boat. Uh, well, for now anyway. The one thing with boats is that you'll add one thing and the next day you'll think, oh, I need that. And the next day, oh, I need that. So I'm sure there'll be plenty more things we'll add as we go along. We've made a couple of mistakes. One in particular, you see the Minn Kota here. It's right in front of the front seat. So whoever's sitting in here is gonna have a Minn Kota right in their face, unless they turn it around and use it as a headrest. But, um, so that was an oversight, but we had to put the seat on this side to balance the boat with the driver being on that side. So in hindsight, perhaps it would have been better to turn this plate around and have the Minn Kota come out there, but that's okay. For now, we'll just do, deal with it and I'll just stick my son up the front. One thing we've got to do now is get this motor running. It's a Maxxis, uh, which I've actually never heard of before, but probably just a Chinese brand. I'm not 100% sure. We've run the fresh fuel into it. Uh, it did start for us a second ago. A little two stroke. Let's give it a go. Ready, Jace? We've got it in the bucket of water. Oh, smell the two stroke. Yep, plenty of pressure. Beautiful. Well, I think the next thing to do is to get her out on the water and, uh, and give her a test, but that's pretty much our little boat project there. Done and dusted for now. Again, any questions, please pop them in the comments field below. Uh, we've probably got a, lot, a few other little modifications to make, maybe a deck on the front. Uh, we've put a rod holder at the back here on the angle. Don't know if that's gonna work. Uh, so we'll give that a try and see what happens. We might have to add some on the side here. 
There's always something, isn't there, Jase? Absolutely. There's always something. What else can you see that you would do if this is yours? Look, I think we're pretty much all on par yeah. with it all. Uh, great little practical boat. Shallow water and your main river systems and stuff like that. Keep it simple and the less issues you have to worry about. But um, yeah, maybe a set of lights. Lights. Nav lights yes. when, when the time comes. And um, yeah. I'm Bob's your uncle. But I think you could as well. If you have a look at the electronics on this boat, they're worth more than the boat themselves itself. <laughs> you don't have to do that. You don't have to go all. You don't have to have a Minn Kota. Uh, you don't have to have a really really expensive sounder. Uh, it helps. And it's nice to have if you can afford it. But there are plenty of tinnies on the market like this. Get you out on the water. And get you among the, amongst the fish. Good for a kid, eh? Absolutely. Good, Good for an adult. Big kids as well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed the series. Shut up, Rodney! <laughs> what do you want to say? Put a fly bridge on it? You idiot. <laughs> you can just stand on my shoulders. 